The title of my sermon is Martha's Good Confession, and I preached this on Sunday, February the 16th, 2014 at Asbury United Methodist Church in Harrington, Delaware. My name is the Reverend Dr. Lawrence Jameson. And this is part of a series on uh, the Good Confession, and today we're talking about Martha's Good Confession. Now, you might wonder, well, what is a good confession? Um, it's personal. It's real. It's uh, speaking out for Jesus personally. And the good confession happens when you tell people out loud, using your words, that you are a Christian and that you're loyal, loyal to Jesus As Christ. As a Christian, when you speak out for Jesus, you're making it possible for another person to get closer to Him. When they hear your testimony, when they see you standing up on your own two feet and professing your faith and your love for God, then that builds them up and uh, it shows them a good example of what they can follow and it makes a difference in their lives. And so that's how you can be an en enzyme, you can be a catalyst to your family, to your friends, to the people in your church, your church family. It's very, very important to give your good confession. Now, the good confession is a sign that you're growing in Christ because baby Christians are not able to do this. Uh, mature so Christians are. So, when you tell people about your love for Jesus and what He's done for you, it's a form of the good confession. Now, this is not always easy. In fact, it's sometimes very difficult and costly. Today, I'm talking about Martha's good confession. And if there are two words that I have to describe that characterize Martha's good confession, I would say hurt and angry. Martha made her good confession when she was hurt and when she was angry. Now, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus uh, were very close friends of Jesus. They were uh, his disciples. They saw his miracles. They learned from him and, and followed his teaching. But in addition to that, they had a very close bond with Jesus. They were very close to Him and good friends. And because of this, and keeping that in mind, it was shocking to Martha and Mary when their brother became ill and Jesus did not come right away. Now, if you look at the timeline of how this uh, event took place, and you study this uh, in the New Testament, uh, the Gospel stories, you see that Lazarus died pretty much the same day that he took ill. First he became ill, and his sisters, Martha and Mary, uh, sent a messenger to Jesus to go and tell him that uh, their, their brother had become ill. And so it took about a day for the messenger to go from Martha and Mary's and Lazarus' home to find Jesus, and they knew where he was. Uh, they were following him uh, in terms of uh, word of mouth. And so they sent this messenger. Well, it took an, an entire day for the messenger to get there, but not very long after the messenger left and was out of earshot, uh, Lazarus died. And back then there was no embalming. They buried people the same day that they died, and so they buried Lazarus that same day. Jesus, of course, got the message, you know, a day later, and then he could have returned right away, but he, he waited. He waited because he was planning a miracle. And he waited a day, and then he came and he told his disciples to follow him, and they and took a day. So there was a total of three days. The messenger day, the day Jesus waited, and then the day that Jesus traveled. And when Jesus arrived on the third day, during that time, Martha and Mary had plenty of time to build up a head of steam. You know, in John 11:21, the Bible records the very first words that Martha said to Jesus when he arrived. The words were not pretty. She said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. End quote. So that's how she felt. She was being brutally honest. Now, Jesus did not scold her. He did not correct her or try to calm her down. He didn't offer an excuse. He didn't try to distract her or to reason with her. I'll tell you what Jesus did. Jesus wept. And this is uh, the shortest verse in the Bible. And it has to do with Jesus weeping uh, over the grief and the sorrow that he saw in Martha and his, her sister 
Mary and his love for Lazarus, uh, Jesus wept. Martha's grief hit Jesus full force. And Jesus did not turn away or back down. He faced Martha. And at the lowest point in her life, and this was, this was a crisis for her. He gave her the opportunity to publicly make her good confession at that time. Now this was outdoors where people were gathered around. It wasn't in a, in a, in a, in a small room inside. No, it was outdoors and there were lots of people. The Bible des, uh, describes this scene that there was plenty of people who were listening to every word they had to say. Jesus gave Martha an opportunity to confess her faith publicly even at the lowest point in her life when she was hurt and when she was angry. Now, now that I've set this up, let's listen to the scripture lesson. It's found in John 11, 23 to 27, and it's taken from the New International Version. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. End quote. And so that last part was her good confession. Yes, Lord, I believe. Now these words were not easy for her to say. She was still angry, she was still hurting, and I want you to know that Martha made her good confession before her brother Lazarus was raised because she had no idea that something like that was even possible. Nobody did. This is so important. The good confession is all about faith. It's not about knowledge. It's not about science. It's about faith. It's about what you believe, and it's about Love and trust. It's easy to declare your allegiance when everything is going great. You are healthy, the money's coming in, people like you, your future is bright, the birds are chirping, rainbows and butterflies are all over the place. That's when the good confession is easy. But Martha made her good confession when her life was a mess when there were tears of grief on her face, with feelings of anger and hurt roiling in her gut, alone, confused, distressed, unsettled, and yet, in spite of all that, she believed. Now, I want that kind of faith. I want the faith like Martha's, because she believed, even at her lowest, she expressed it publicly, and she trusted in the Lord. And she said it out loud. Now, I don't know why God allows bad things to happen, but you know that they happen all the time. They happen to Christians and they happen to non-Christians. Bad things, terrible, awful things happen all the time. In spite of that, God wants you to believe and to share it publicly. To share your faith, because that's what it is. It's not certainty. It's not uh, knowing anything, but it's trusting. And that's what the good confession is all about. Now, with that in mind, maybe we should not call it the good confession, because maybe we should call it the incredibly difficult, sometimes dangerous, always personally embarrassing, and potentially expensive confession. But that doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? So, it's the good confession. And I'll tell you why and it's, it's good, good. Because God is good. Because God is constantly doing good things. He is Lord of your pain, of your despair, your confusion, your anger, and your situation. Jesus is Lord of your heart, your family, your finances, your character, your physical health, your spiritual health, your mental health your calling and your usefulness. He is Lord and He is worthy of our praise. Be ready because God is going to give you an opportunity to declare your faith and it may not be easy and it may not be inexpensive, 
but He's going to give you an opportunity. It's just faith. It's not certainty. It's just faith because it's all about love and trust. Be ready because God will give you an opportunity to declare your faith with words. I'd like to conclude by reading Romans 10, 9 to 13. The Bible tells us that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. Amen. Thanks so much for listening to this sermon.